So how do you know a nonprofit organization is the right move for you? We're going to talk about that today in this video. Let's get into it. Hi, it's Tiffany with the Boss in the Budget. I help people start their nonprofits and raise money for their new nonprofits. So if you need help, you need to make sure you are subscribed to this channel because I drop videos every week. So today, we're going to have a real heart to heart about whether or not a nonprofit is right for you. Because as much as I like to advocate for new nonprofits and for small nonprofits, I also understand that it's not for everybody and it's not always appropriate in every situation to start a nonprofit. So to help you kind of wade through that, because a lot of people who watch my channel often are trying to decide whether or not they want to start a nonprofit. So I wanted to offer some questions you should be asking yourself before you take that leap. Now, starting a nonprofit is an individual decision. I don't know where you are or what you feel you've been called to do. That's an individual personal decision, but my hope is that I can at least educate you enough so you can feel like you can make a confident decision before you move forward. So the first question you're gonna to need to ask yourself is, am I gonna be okay with not doing the direct work anymore and having to be a leader? Now I'm gonna break this question down, okay? Because most people who start their nonprofits, the founders, these are who, are, who I'm talking about, are the people who are gonna lead the organization, right? You have the vision for the organization and you wanna take it somewhere. But you also are starting the organization because you have a heart for the work. Either you have direct experience, you've been impacted by the issue that you're working on, or you experienced it yourself, or you have worked with people who have experienced it. So you want to be in the mix. You want to do, you want to do the work. You want to see the impact. You want to work with your clients or whoever you're working with. But as a nonprofit founder, if you're going to transition into like an executive director role or a leadership role, it's going to require you doing way more than just the direct work with your clients or your participants. It's going to require so much more of you than that right? It's going to push you. It's going to stretch you. You're going to have to do fundraising. You're going to have to develop partnerships and collaborate more. You're going to have to engage with your board of directors. You're going to have to figure out the IRS stuff and the state stuff and regulations and paperwork and budgets and 990 forms, <laughs> all the things. And you can't do both all the time. Sometimes you're going to have to sacrifice doing a direct work and really take care of the administration stuff. And a lot of founders struggle with this because I get it. You did not want to create a nonprofit to do paperwork. You did not want to create a nonprofit to be on calls all day or be doing meetings all day. You want to actually do the work and, and make it to a point where you're going to have to decide, do I want to still be doing the work or do I want to transition into a different type of position to push others, to encourage and teach others to do the work? And that's just a decision you're gonna to have to make, right? So as a leader, you have to be comfortable directing and encouraging other people and building up other people who are gonna be doing the direct work and interfacing with your clients and your participants. And you have to position yourself a little different. You gotta understand it's a completely different role and you have to be ready mentally to walk into that role and it's not easy. It's not an easy transition. So I just want you to understand that if you're going into a nonprofit, like you're, you're starting your nonprofit because you wanna be the one in the streets doing the work, at some point, there's going to be tension there and you got to decide, am I going to be doing a direct work and delegate the administrative stuff and the leadership stuff to someone else? Or am I going to be the leader? And that's just a decision that you're going to have to make. The second question you're going to have to ask yourself is, am I OK with relinquishing control? I'm glad I got that word out because that one is a doozy. <laughs> Are you OK with letting go of some things and letting other people make decisions? So what do I mean by this? If you've watched any of my videos about like what is a nonprofit or should you have a nonprofit or a for-profit, I'm linking one above and putting some links below in the description box. If you've watched any of those videos, then you know I've talked a lot about ownership. When you have a nonprofit, there is no owner. Like just because you're the founder or just because you know, you're the person who had the original idea. You don't necessarily have any special status when it comes to like the paperwork or like who has more say legally. This, it just doesn't work like that, right? So when you're starting your organization, you are relinquishing control to 
the board. They have overall oversight and are ultimately accountable for what happens with that nonprofit in that role. So it's them as a collective that's making decisions to move the organization forward. And just because you as the founder want to move in a certain direction, it doesn't mean the organization automatically will do that or that they're obligated to do that. So you got to understand, like when you're starting your nonprofit, there's just some level of control you're not going to have. You may want certain things to go a certain way. And if the board decides that it's just not going to be that way or it's not the best interest of the organization, then they don't necessarily have to do it. Their responsibilities and their duties are to the organization. They're loyal to the organization's interest, not the founder's interest. And in a lot of circumstances, those are the same. Like most founders are going to make decisions and move in a way that's in the best interest of the organization. But sometimes it's not the same. And sometimes it can be a clash. So just want you to know that going in that if you want a certain level of control, like I have to make all decisions, everything has to be run by me, that you may not always get your way. Now, I'm just going to say this as a caveat because I know this is going to come up in the comments and I've gotten this question before. Well, can't I, this is the question I get. Well, can't I write in the by bylaws that I have to do certain things or things can only happen if the founder lets it or, you know, all those kinds of stuff that you want to put in as safeguards for yourself. Let me just say this. If you're going to put something in your bylaws, you need to run it by a lawyer to make sure that it can even stand legally. <laughs> That's number one. And number two, if you're fighting that hard to maintain control of the organization, I want you to think about whether or not you really should have a nonprofit, right? If that's really what you want, if that's really gonna fit your needs. And the answer may be yes, but I'm just throwing it out there just so you know that if you're trying to make it fit to what you want, it may not always work that way. Third question I want you to ask yourself is, am I okay if it takes time for this to really be sustainable? And the reason why I want to throw that question out there is because a lot of people want to start their nonprofits because they want to quit their jobs. They want to do passion work. They don't want to just do dead end jobs. They want to do things that they care about, but also be paid for that. And there's nothing wrong with that. I don't think there's any shame in wanting to have a nonprofit and do good work, but also be paid by that. Nonprofits employ a sizable number of the employees in the United States. So there's nothing wrong with wanting a nonprofit to employ yourself and employ others. But some people come in it with the expectation that, oh, they'll run it for a year and then in year two, they'll be ready to pay their, their salary and they can just quit their job. And in most circumstances, I have not seen it work like that. In most circumstances, it takes at least three years to get to the point where you can even begin to think about paying yourself. And then it takes time. Like there's a progression. You may start part time and then build up to full time. But again, there's nothing wrong with that. That's just the life cycle of a nonprofit. Nonprofits are built heavily on building relationships and networking and building stronger connections with people in your community. And that takes time. That takes time to build trust and build credibility so that people can fund you. And the other piece is a lot of the funding that new nonprofit founders pursue, namely grants, don't necessarily pay salary costs all the time, or they may not be willing to pay administrative costs, which, which is what a lot of founders are like you do a lot of administration work so your salary may have to cover may have to be covered by administrative money and a lot of grants don't do that so what I'm gonna say to you is be comfortable with the slow build up because it's just going to take time now your time can be accelerated if you have a large group of people helping and supporting you if you have a very supportive board a very active board a well-connected board and I don't mean like rich Right. I don't mean that at all, but people who are willing to work, people who are willing to get out there and make connections for you, then that time may be cut short. Absolutely. The bigger the network, the more you're able to do and the quicker your success will be. But in most circumstances, people don't start out like that. So just be comfortable with the slow ride to get to where you're trying to be. Fourth question I want you to ask yourself is, am I OK with fundraising all the time? <laughs> this is something you got to come to grips with and it's not it's not much different than like a for-profit but especially in a nonprofit, you have to always be thinking about how you're going to earn money there's very rare circumstances where you just have like an unlimited pot where you just keep going in for the pot 
Like there's a grant fund. We can just keep going in and every year you get that same grant. That just doesn't happen, y'all. So you always have to be thinking about where is our money coming from and where are our key income sources and how can we deepen our relationships so that the people who have given to us continue to give to us. It has to be top of mind, especially if you're a nonprofit founder and you're running the organization and you don't necessarily have designated fundraising staff. Now, when you get a development director or development staff, that's something that they're going to worry about more. But absolutely, as an executive director, that's still part of your like, that's still your purview. That's still something you need to be concerned about. And as the board, one of their main responsibilities is to fundraise and also to maintain the financial health of the organization. So it has to be top of mind for everybody. But the problem is most people will say, I don't like fundraising. I don't like asking for money. I don't know how to do it. All of that, right? So how can it be top of mind when most people hate doing it or feel like they don't know how to do it? And that's the point. You gotta get comfortable asking for money. You gotta get comfortable putting yourself in a position to understand, to learn, to grow to be pushed to you know find income sources to be to be financially sustainable to be creative around how you make money that has to be something that you're thinking about all the time and I'm not necessarily saying in every interaction you have with people ask for money I'm saying put the foundation in place so that you have all the things you need to raise money like a budget like a fundraising plan You've engaged your entire board. You're thinking about how to develop connections. You're putting the fundraising cycle in place and you're utilizing the strategies from the fundraising cycle. If you've never heard of the fundraising cycle, I want you to check out my fundraising masterclass, which I'm linking below in the description box. And it gives you a great overview of what fundraising is and how you can start implementing action steps today. But all in all, I'm just saying that you got to get comfortable with asking for money. You got to get comfortable with building to the ass. You got to get comfortable with thanking and acknowledging people when you raise money. It has to be a central part of what you do. The fifth question you want to ask yourself is, am I okay with doing a lot of administrative work? Or the other question could be, am I okay with having to delegate a lot of the administrative work because it's not my strong suit? <laughs> So it's just what it is. It's a lot of paperwork, a lot of things to maintain. You got to have policies in place. You got to make sure that you, you're you up to speed on state regulations and IRS regulations, that you're doing your yearly requirements, like submitting your 990 form, submitting any, any annual form to the state, doing charitable solicitation forms, and making sure you're filling those out every year. Like there are absolutely things that you need to keep on top of and it's really easy to get caught up with that stuff it's really easy to forget about all those things and miss deadlines and get caught up and not do your paperwork because it's overwhelming especially if it's something you're not used to especially if it's something that you don't even know you're supposed to complete it right so you just got to get your mind right when it comes to administrative requirements and just know it's a lot like it's, it's, it is, I'm not even going to sugarcoat it or be like, oh, it's not that much. It's not that bad if you know what you're doing. No, <laughs> it's a lot um, because you got the state, you got the IRS, you got fundraising to worry about. You got to worry about your policies. And then when you start implementing programs, there are policies related to your programming and procedures you need to have a place for your programming and just for your internal work in your organization. It's just a lot to maintain. So my question to you is, are you ready for that? Right. And that may help you decide whether or not this is a step you want to take or not. Y'all, was that helpful? Are there other questions for people who are nonprofit founders that you would ask? I'm pretty sure I've missed some things. I may even have to do a part two to this video. But are there other questions like if you as a nonprofit founder that you wish somebody would have asked you so you could examine like whether or not you were ready? That would be so helpful if you could put that in the comments below. And also, if you need help with your nonprofit, you can visit me at www.bossonabudget.com if you need more help. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.